Every day we hear about how the Israeli army is working to fight terror in the region. But now we can get an inside glimpse into the life of one of Israel's top commanding generals. Joining us in the studio is Commanding General Gal Hirsch to tell us about his new bestseller, Defensive Shield. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Natasha. So, I really want to read this book, but first, let's talk about the issues and what you are actually addressing in this bestseller. In the past year, it seemed like terrorism around the world is getting worse. Yeah. Where is it coming from, and how should we be approaching it? Well, unfortunately, it is very close to us here in Israel. Actually, since the Arab Spring, or we may call it Middle East upheaval, you know, the regimes that surrounded us, that could handle with terrorism because Muslims, uh, fundamental radical Islamists were always here. But the regimes could actually contain the violence and they had the right toolkit to deal with it. Since the Arab Springs, the bottles actually are broken. And Ginny has left the bottle. And he travels all around us. And right now, it's not only the problem of Israel. Israel is usually the front guard for the free world. Right now, we see that everywhere. It's in Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, United States of America. It's everywhere. So, you know, is a boots-on-ground approach to dealing with ISIS necessary, or are airstrikes going to be something that we can continue to do and find successful? Well, as mentioned, and I speak about it quite a lot in my book, actually, since Ginny has left the battle, and he travels all around us, he used to go into the mass populated areas. He used urban terrain. He used actually uh, mountains and forests and the bush. He likes it because he can hide there. He used human shield, for an example. Now, you cannot deal with guerrillas. You cannot make counterinsurgency and counter guerrilla and counterterrorism campaign from the air. Airstrike won't be enough. You need boots on the ground, you need commandos, special forces, secret services, and the best of the best intelligence. Interesting. Now, turning to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which is completely different, although we could keep on talking about that because it's very interesting. You know, Israel has been criticized for using excessive force when it comes to dealing with Palestinian terrorism. As someone who has decades of experience on the ground, what is your response to this? Is it fair for Israel to be getting this criticism? Look, I know the Palestinian terrorism firsthand. You know, I was badly injured in a well-prepared Islamic jihadist ambush north to Ramallah and I spent a year and more in hospitals under surgical operations and a tough recovery procedure until today I'm 59 percent disabled and returned to the battlefield because it is important to return and fight. Now I can tell you firsthand and I think I'm quite objective. The state of Israel is not looking for any friction. I think that the Palestinian terrorism actually drive us to respond and to protect our mass populated areas from suicide bombers, for an example, from rockets. And any time we've made any withdrawal, as usually, as you know, the state of Israel is badly criticized and uh, people from Europe and from all around the world ask us to withdraw. Any time we've made a withdrawal, what have we got in return? Rockets, suicide bombers, snipers, shootings, knives, stabbing, cars, all around us, every time. And I think that everything we do, actually, is only to protect our citizens. The book, the book's name, is Defensive Shield. Now, I am the chief planner of Defensive Shield operation. Let me remind you, that for about two years before, before Defensive Shield Operation in March 2002, we were under massive intensive terror attacks in the mass populated areas of Israel. Suicide bombers everywhere. And we had to do that. It was not our choice. We tried two years, you know, to, to, to do anything we can. And the thing we should remember, that Defensive Shield Operation, as a result of massive intensive terror offensive maneuver by the Palestinians and the building of the security barrier, I'm the chief planner of the security barrier as well, 
All that event has happened only as our response and effort to protect ourselves. It was not our initiative. Now, this week, we were, well, not celebrating, but marking the anniversary of the second war in Lebanon. And yesterday afternoon, Israel actually scrambled to shoot down a drone, which many are saying actually came from Hezbollah. Ten years later, you know, this, this war in, in uh, 2006 was highly criticized by Israel, and ten years later, we're still seeing the threats uh, of Hezbollah in the north. Was the war worth it, and has it in any way prepared Israel to deal with more threats from the north? Well, I've been in command of the 91st Division, who's called uh, also the Galilee Division, the main division that fought against Hezbollah during the Second Lebanon War. And uh, you can see the results of deterrence of the 2006 war. Ten years, ten years, with almost total silence along the border. Now, since the 70s, we suffered many terror attacks, infiltrations into our territory, rockets, hostage situations, many traumatic memories from the north. In the last 10 years, silence. That means that a strike such as 2006 war works. And I really believe that uh, the Second Lebanon War, although there are many things that we had to fix after the war, that we found out that we've made mistakes, we need to make lessons learned, the debriefing process was very tough, but there is no doubt that it was a success from the strategic point of view. If you guys are interested in picking up a copy of Defensive Shield, just head to Amazon. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very much, Natasha.